All right. Joining me via Zoom. So we are live here on the Aaron Torres Pod YouTube page. It is 11.13 Eastern Time, 10.13 Central. And sometimes in life, it's a little bit better to be lucky than good. Wes Moore, a longtime friend of mine. Man. As, be as best I can tell, the first person that had John Calipari to Arkansas as being not just there talking, but that this mf -er, excuse my language, might happen. Wes, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Man, it's been a crazy day, Aaron. Uh, I tell you, I, I got out of church. And normally I don't work on Sundays, but my weekend anchor is off okay. today. So I go into work and I get a phone call from a man, a very trusted source that's been around for a long time, not only the state of Arkansas, but the college basketball world. And he's like, Wes, you hear anything about Calipari? And I was like, man, I saw some crazy tweet, you know, that uh, earlier today, but I kind of dismissed it. He goes, I think there's some legs to this, and I think it's happening. I'm like, whoa. So I immediately, Aaron, you know, I start digging through all my sources, calling and texting everybody I know. And sure enough, I'm getting some very good information. And I honestly, Aaron, I sat on it for a couple of hours. Sure. Uh, because, and, I, and I've told several people this, if it would have been, Coach Joe Blow at X University, <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have tweeted it out. This is John freaking Cal Perry. This this isn't just Arkansas hiring a coach. This is national news of Cal Perry leaving Kentucky and coming to Arkansas. So I had to be damn sure that I trusted my sources and I worked them. And I they're probably so tired of hearing from me. Um, and I told them last time I called, I was like, I'm going with this. You, we're buds. You know me. You know my reputation. It's on the line here. How do you feel? He's like, dude, it, it, this is happening unless Arkansas screws this up. And so, or, you know, there's a last minute, you, you know how contra, and that's course, why I said man. this in, in the tweet, and I said this on the TV tonight. There, there, It's not a done deal, as far as I'm, I've been told. Uh, the ink hasn't been, you know, signed. It's not a done deal. But every indication I have, this is happening, and Cal Perry is going to be the next head coach at Arkansas. I feel very comfortable saying that, but no, it's not a done deal. Something could happen. I don't think it's going to happen. And I, I really think, man, this is going to be – and it already is. You're starting to see on Twitter from some other reporters, uh, people in Kentucky are saying he has notified Kentucky that he's talked with Arkansas. So, And let me say this too. And I've heard it on multiple occasions, never with me, that when someone's had it, something wrong here in Arkansas, somebody will reach out to them and say, hey, dude, you've missed the boat on this. You you may need to take that tweet down. You may need to change your story. That hasn't happened. So there's a lot to peel back there. You know, first of all, just tell us a little bit about your background, how long you've been in the state. Of, I know your background, but I just want people to sure. know how plugged in you are in that community. Uh, I've been in Arkansas since 03, so 21 years. I've been the sports director at two different TV stations here in Little Rock. Uh, I now do a radio show for 103.7 The Buzz. It's the sports station in Arkansas and uh, goes all across uh, Little Rock. I've been doing that for five years along with TV. So I've been in the, the media here in Arkansas for 20 years doing radio part-time off and on, but doing TV for 21 years. So you know, so you so you feel pretty confident that you know everybody there essentially is to know in the state of Arkansas. No, I have a good grasp. I have a good sure. set of sources and felt very comfortable. Like I said, I mean, this is this is huge news. This isn't this isn't just going and hiring, no offense to Will Wade or or some of the other candidates. If it would have been another candidate, maybe I would have, you know, got the information, three sources, you know, check, check, check. Okay, let's go with this. I had to be even more positive, get more information before I set set. And it was, it was still like, I, I copy and pasted my tweet. I sent it to my boss. I said, here, what do you think? He goes, you, you've covered your bases. You've done the work. I trust you. I trust you like no one else in the state of Arkansas. If you say this is happening and your sources say it's happening, go with it. I like your tweet. I went back and 
hit tweet and I was like, Oh Lord. And life is never going to be the same. Well, I will tell you this. There are a lot of people that I know that don't even like college basketball that much that know who the F Wes Moore is right now. So uh, it's been an incredible day for you. Let me ask you this. Um, take us through as best as you know, just the timeline of this weekend, because I can tell oh. you, well, not just from the Calipari perspective, but being in, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I, I know a lot of people in Arkansas, right? And so I'm not saying that in any way, shape or form to brag because you're the one with the story, but everyone is feeding me all sorts of different things. And now I'm in Phoenix and I have access to people that I wouldn't normally have access to. Hey, you know, X, Y, Z coach, um, you know, do you buy that, that Arkansas would be interested or that he would be interested? So, you know, go through the names that we've heard. So just take us through what this weekend has been like for you trying to gather in for, cause there was, I mean, even as of 12 hours ago, there were so many names and Calipari was the pie in the sky and all this stuff. Uh, take us through what the, the last like 12 hours has been like, or like the before the last 12 hours, I should say. Well, it all starts with Chris Beard and I'm very comfortable in saying that they, that they got down to negotiations and they just couldn't close the deal for one reason or another with coach Beard. He like Calipari, has strong ties to the state. Coach Beard was at Little Rock. He was the head coach of Little Rock Trojans, took them to the NCAA tournament, won a game in the tournament, and then that's when he got the job at UNLV for a couple of days. And then he got the job at Texas Tech. Beard has a lot of friends here. Beard has a lot of friends in power here. That had a very good chance of happening somehow, some way. I don't know if we'll ever find out the true story and why it broke down. But it did. It broke down. Then it was on to plan B. I've been told and it's been reported that Tang was never offered a contract. Did they talk? I don't know. I think so. Yes, I do think they had a discussion with Tang to see if he was interested. And right away, he got a new deal at Kansas State. Then that's air. That's when it started. Yes, that's when it got weird. That's when it got weird. Yeah, yeah. the names out there. And, you know, even Daryl Walker, the head coach of the Little Rock Trojans, was mentioned. Uh, he has a lot of friends here in the state, and I like Coach Walker. I mean, I do the Razorback postgame show for the uh, radio station. Coach Walker, after one of Arkansas's wins, I think it was that gritty win at Texas A&M, texted me and said, what time does your show start? I want to come on. I have something to say. I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll be on in 30 minutes. Call in. And he just wanted to compliment Coach Musselman for keeping the team together and getting a gritty defensive win like that. But anyway, I say that because Coach Walker has a lot of friends here, and I, I, I truly think he did get a, a, a talk. They discussed it with him, and I don't know if it was just a, a matter of feeling him out, feeling uh, maybe finding out who he thinks would be a good job because he loves the Razorbacks, no doubt about it. Coach Walker loves the Razorbacks. He is a very proud Razorback. But some of these other names, you know, Jans has been thrown out there. Will Wade has been thrown out. I don't know. Uh, and I'll be honest with you. And I didn't dig into those names. Uh, and I had no one calling me and texting me about those guys. So I'm not sure if as soon as the beard and, and they found out quickly that Tang was getting a contract, I think they may have zeroed in, in Cal on Calipari. And it's been going on behind the scenes in Phoenix because um, your check's been out there. And I know Calipari was out there. So I, I tend to think this has been going on for a while. Because it normally doesn't, you know, this is a big deal. You don't just big turn, deal. You know, you don't just uh, talk to him this morning at eight o'clock and go, okay, yeah, we're going to do this. So I feel like this has been going on for probably all day yesterday and finalized today. So it's crazy. And I'll just tell you really quick, and I want to get back to you because you're the star of the show here. I, I, I Come on feel now. you're a big star. We all well, that, I mean, listen, no one is ever going to not say that, that I'm not a star. No. And, and Torres is never going to not, not, you know, pat himself on the back when you get a chance. But what I will say is I have somebody pretty hey. close to Will Wade. I've had Will Wade on my show, yeah. but I, I didn't talk to coach Wade all week. And I have somebody very close to Will Wade. And they're like, they kept telling me, I don't think Arkansas is interested. I don't think Arkansas is interested. By the way, we do have breaking news as we're live. Pete Thamel. Following the lead of Wes Moore, John Calipari is finalizing a five-year deal to become the Arkansas Razorbacks' next head coach. Deal is expected to be completed in 24 hours. So enough of the BS. Why I bring it up, it never felt like Will Wade was a real candidate and nobody could figure out why. This is obviously why. First of all, what is your reaction to the Pete Thamel thing? I'm guessing you are not surprised. Is that is that fair to say? No. And you know how the information leaks out? 
I think the deal's already everything's done but signed. Yes. He's already agreed to the deal. I mean, I've all I've had one source. Um, and you know how we like to go with three sources in TV and it kind of rubs off for me on radio. I've already had one source tell me what he's going to be making and how, how long the terms are. So I think that's already done. Sure. Um, I, I, maybe he has signed it. We just don't know it yet, but I think that this word is just now leaking out and it's getting out there. And I think everybody's just a little bit a step behind of what is actually happening. Um, so yeah, that doesn't surprise me at all. I, I feel like the terms have been agreed upon and, all that's left, it maybe, is to sign the deal. Really quickly, a couple more because I don't, you know, you just did a full TV show. Your your day's hectic. A couple things. First of all, tell us about the relationship. Well, first of all, tell for for somebody that would sit there that that doesn't follow college hoops like you and I hasn't mm -hmm. been to the natty state like me and seen Arkansas up close and in person. The average person would say this is insane. Why would Calipari be interested? Tell us why Calipari would be interested. We know why he'd be a candidate. And I know why he'd be interested, but from your perspective, living there, covering this team day in and day out, why is he interested? What, well, he, why, it's beyond interested, but you get the point. Well, he, he gets a fresh start. I mean, we all know of how the seat was hot. Heck, his AD had to come out had to come out this year and say he's going to be back. How crazy is that? That the AD of Kentucky had to come out on Twitter and say John Calipari is going to be our coach next year. And that's wild. That's how hot his seat was that his AD had to let everybody know he was coming back. So this is a fresh start for Coach Cal. He's not stupid. He knows that uh, there, there were people at Kentucky that were frustrated with what's happened in the NCAA tournament. And the, what is it now? I wrote it down. Two and six in the NCAA tournament since 2021. That There, there are some schools where they're happy that they've made it to the NCAA tournament in, in that, that many times since 2021. And then there's Kentucky where that's not good enough. And so this is a fresh start where he has a rabid fan base. He has an arena that's going to have 18 to 20, 18,000 people packed out to watch his games. He's going to have the NIL funds to go out and recruit like he did at Kentucky. And this is a way you think about this success at UMass, success at Memphis, success at Kentucky, success at Arkansas. That's kind of cementing your legacy that you're a great head coach. And so I think this is, I'll tell you one more thing I was told. Please, please. Uh, he wants his son on his staff, and he yes. can do that at Arkansas. And it wasn't happening at Kentucky. And that relationship means a lot to him, the opportunity to coach his son. I get that. And so I think that's very attractive, too. Dumb question. Again, for people who do not know, tell us about the relationship with John Tyson and John Calipari. They're very, very good friends. And real, and real quick, who who is John Tyson for people who don't know? Tyson chicken? Ever heard of Tyson chicken? Had some chicken nuggets? You go to the grocery store and get you a package of chicken, a package of chicken that's frozen. It's probably Tyson chicken, and that's up in Springdale, Northwest Arkansas, just outside of Fayetteville. Uh, Coach Cal and I can't remember when it was. It was one. I'm not sure if it was this year or two years ago when Kentucky was here. There is a picture, and you can find it if you look for it on the I, internet I or Twitter. It's him with a bunch of people in Northwest Arkansas at a restaurant taking a picture. And John Tyson's one of those guys in that picture. And so he and him are very close. And John Tyson, I, I don't want to give away too much, but he was, would you, is it fair to say he was the driving source, uh, driving force behind this? It never hurts to have uh, a good friend in a powerful position, does it? No, no, that's why I called you. Listen, that's why I called you. Real <laughs> quick, does, does, does Hunter Yurchek even think to make the call? without John Tyson. Oh yeah, I'm sure he did. I mean, he's looking for, he was looking for a proven winner. That's Cal Perry. Uh, maybe someone that's not happy at their current situation that would come to Arkansas. That fits Cal Perry, but I'm sure, uh, and I don't know this for a fact, but I would bet Tyson picked up the phone or texted your check and said, Hey, if you want me to make a call, if you want me to send a text or maybe <laughs> I sent a text, I made a call. I got somebody for you. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if that's how it all went down. But I don't want to take anything away from Hunter Yurchek. This is a it's a great hire for him. He needs to uh, get credit for this, and because he, he was taking a beating here, I'll tell you that. Uh, you, you, you get on. I used to, several times last week. Hunter Yurchek was great. He's always great about. Hey, good luck to the Razorback softball team. Is there in action tonight? Or great luck, great job, Razorback baseball team on getting another win tonight against Ole Miss. And then the mentions are just oh, – yeah. 
it's disgusting. And he was taking a beating from the fans for not getting beard and for some of the names that have been leaked out there that he may be interested in. So he deserves credit for this. And uh, so I don't want to take anything away from what Hunter Yurchek was able to pull off. And I think people need to know, too. I mean, obviously, things didn't go well with football last year. Some thought, you know, he should be gone. You know, uh, the, the football coach should be gone. I'm not putting you on the spot here. But, um, you know, and, I, and when these other names started leaking, uh, Porter Mosier, whoever, like, I was telling people, I was like, if that's the hire, no disrespect, Porter Mosier, if you're watching. By the way, right now we have about 10,000 people watching, if my math is correct here, Wes, between Twitter and YouTube. So uh, beers are on me next time you have family in California, beers, are, beers yeah. and dinner and uh, all the Tyson chicken you can eat is on me, man. So I appreciate this. <laughs> you know, one, you're welcome to stay on as long as you want, but I will get you out of here if you want to go on one question. What does this mean to Arkansas? We've talked about why, what, Cal, mm. this, that. What does it mean for the, the unit? Listen, the thing about this, Wes, my alma mater, UConn, is going to be playing for a second straight national championship tomorrow. The University of Arkansas will be the biggest story in school sports. Kaitlin Clark just lost in the national championship game. She gets bumped off the TV for the University of Arkansas. What does this mean for the school, for the state, for that hog logo, everything? Man, Aaron, they went 25 years from 1996 to 2011 not going to a Sweet 16. This is Arkansas that won a national championship in 94, played for it in 95. They were going to Sweet 16s. They were have they had all kinds of success under Nolan Richardson. 99 on through Stan Heath and John Pelfrey, Mike Anderson, never a Sweet 16. Mike, Coach Musselman comes in here, takes them to Elite Eight, Elite Eight, Sweet 16, and all of a sudden this place is going crazy about basketball again, and then he leaves. And the thought is, and you don't know how many times on the radio that we would throw out or some caller would throw out a name and they would go, that's Stan Heath 2.0. We're going back. This is going to be just like when Nolan Richardson left. We're going back to those days. Not anymore. John Calipari coming in. You're telling me he's not going to take Arkansas to the tournament. You're telling me he won't take Arkansas to sweet 16. John Calipari with the chip on his shoulder. You're telling me he won't take them to the lead eight or a final four. That's what that does for Arkansas. That gets Arkansas back. Eric Mossman made Arkansas relevant in basketball. Mm -hmm. People here were afraid they were about to be irrelevant again, and no one would be talking about Arkansas basketball. That's all changed. People are going to be talking about Arkansas basketball because of John Calipari. And if he does what people expect, you know, expects him to do, what his past has shown, he's going to take Arkansas to the tournament, and they're going to be relevant. They're going to remain relevant. That's what it does. This is, you know, you mentioned football and the rough year that Coach Pittman had. The hire of Bobby Petrino brought everybody back on board, got everybody excited again. Spring football, people are curious about the quarterback battle, the, the, the offense. Now with basketball, it's going to remain. The the love for this uh, – the love wasn't going away, but the fear is going away that Arkansas is going to fall back to being a mediocre basketball school. Does this speak to the entire athletic department is probably never given the credit nationally? Because that's the one thing, right? So, oh, Torres, you just kiss Arkansas's ass, ass. Excuse my language. I'm like, no, it's a great school with great resources. Listen, and, and having, and I could say this, having been down there this year, um, you know, it's one of the most beautiful campuses I've ever seen. Everything's brand yeah. new. Uh, Palace of the Midwest, uh, mid, whatever. I apologize to Arkansas fans that are going to crush me for bo butchering that. Um, but, Beautiful arena. By the way, every facility on that campus is beautiful, brand new. I just, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to add. It's just, it's unbelievable. I, it, I'm in, I'm in shock, man. I'm in freaking shock, dude. I'm in freaking. Well, shock. I, let me throw something else at you. What is it? What do you got? Arkansas is uh, has plans for a huge renovation of Bud Walton Arena. Ooh, and they're trying to find the funds to get this done. And it, it's a great arena. You saw it, but it was built in the mid '90s, and it needs a facelift. It needs it needs more suites. It needs sure. it needs to it needs to welcome it to 2024. That's what it needs. It needs a makeover. It that's going to take a lot of money. If you don't make the right hire, you think that money's coming in to fix this arena up? 
especially after the season you had last year, it was going to be hard enough to try to get that kind of money to, to do this renovation. Now by hiring Calipari, I think that money will come in. It, <laughs> give credit to the Arkansas Edge. That's their NIL sure. uh, fund. They tweeted out this evening, just a simple tweet with a mm-hmm. link and said, hey, we're just putting this out here. Just oh, the, the the link to the to the collective. Over over. Now's the time to to strike while the iron is hot. And is it is it ignorant to say uh, ignorant ignorant to even ask offensive to even ask? Um, as you just said, you know, Coach Musk, we love him, but he was coming off a disappointing year. Maybe there were some people that weren't sold on the vision for the future. I'm guessing that John Calipari is going to have every NIL resource that he needs, every staff salary pool that he needs. I know you said you have numbers. I don't want you to share them if you have if you don't have them confirmed. But you're comfortable that everything is going to be done at the highest of high levels for John Calipari at Arkansas? Yeah, I know for a fact that in the beer discussions, they had gathered up the necessary NIL money to make it a very attractive package. And let's face it these days, when a coach is negotiating, you know, used to he'd, he'd negotiate his salary, maybe some money for his assistants, coaches, you know, money for this, for travel, for, you know, our recruiting budget. Now – they have to sit down with that athletic director and say, what's my NIL budget? Mm -hmm. What are you going to have for me? Because the coach, he wants to get paid, but he's got to have that NIL money or he may not be around very long because that's part, that's the game these days. You got to have that money to go out there and recruit in the NIL landscape. And so I know for a fact they had that ready uh, for coach Beard. They've got it ready for coach Cal Perry. I could ask you a million more questions because People are riveted. The chat is insane. But I'm guessing you just did an hour of TV. I'm sure your phone has been bananas. I mean, do, do you have anything? you do, First of all, do you want to hang? Do you got anything? to? I mean, you, how long is your drive home? Be honest. Uh, it's a, uh, about a 15-minute drive. It's not L.A. where I have to work. You know, I'm in the car for an hour. It's just, you yeah. know, I'm driving out to West Little Rock. It's about a 15-minute drive. Okay. What else you I'm got? Good. I'm good. Ask me. Fire away. All right. You want to take some questions from the chat? Yeah. Let's do this. All right. Let's pull up some questions from the chat, Producer Matt. Yeah, Matt, the, there are – Producer Matt has probably – I'm not even kidding – thousands – maybe not thousands, but hundreds of questions. Um, I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to think of anything else that we could have potentially missed. Uh, first of all, Arkansas fans are crushing me for for ruining the basketball palace of mid-America, so I apologize about that. Um What's next? I mean, so so first of all, do you have any idea on time frame, on a press conference, on an introduction? Because as you said, I think it's a great point is, you know, this isn't Hunter Yurichek calling John Calipari on Sunday morning and say, hey, yeah, you, you think you might want to come coach here? Like this has clearly been going on behind the scenes for a while. Um, do you have a sense for time frames, next steps, all that? You know, nothing confirmed. I'll say that. But I have had a couple of people that have reached out to me and said they think the news comes tomorrow for sure. And I think that's smart. You've got to get this out there confirmed. He's done deal. So when they're, people are going to be talking about it, the final four tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night. I mean, this is huge news there. I'm telling you, man, so it's insane. You got to get this out there. So during the broadcast tomorrow night, pregame show that this is being talked about, and knowing Calipari, he, heck, he may make an appearance on the halftime show or pregame show to, to discuss this. But I've also been told, and I don't know how true this is, that it's kind of the unwritten rule not to have a press conference on the day of the championship game to distract from the game. You think your new coach, John Calipari, cares about unwritten rules? You think your new coach, John Calipari, cares about unwritten rules? Written or unwritten. So they'll do oh. what they want to do. Okay, I got yeah. you. No, no, no. I, I, I think it's real, and I have no inside information. But I, I don't think that it is. Um, I don't think that there will be any. There might be a formal announcement, but they won't do the. And by the way, here's the other thing. Like with due respect to, go ahead, go ahead. No, what were you? I'm going to tell you one other thing that people around here know, but people out there don't know. The uh, total eclipse is coming through the middle of Arkansas <laughs> tomorrow. No, no, I'm serious. It is tomorrow afternoon at one fifty three. Totality is coming over Arkansas. I mean, there it's insane, dude. How many people are in this state from out of state? I'm driving around and I'm seeing Alabama, Colorado, Oklahoma. I mean, tax every license plate you can imagine driving around Little Rock right now. That's all happening tomorrow. 
like our news department's going wall to wall coverage for like six hours tomorrow. And then, so our newscasts are all going to be wall to wall, except for a couple minutes <laughs> of John Calipari accepting the job for sports. So hopefully, and I think the university of Arkansas knows this and because the same thing's going up in Fayetteville with all the news coverage, it would be a terrible day for us to have a press conference introducing John Calipari in the state because of that news that's going on here. Uh, so maybe they realize that and they'll hold off and have the press conference on Tuesday when we're, we actually have some bodies available that can go cover the press conference. Well, and I was going to say, too, just some quick mental math. I mean, listen, I mean, UConn winning a back-to-back -back national championship is cool, but, dude, UConn wins on Monday night. You know, first of all, you work in the news, local radio, everything. It's like we know how quick the news cycle works. UConn wins, Purdue wins, whatever. You you have that introductory press conference on Tuesday, like you said, maybe a a, a press release tomorrow, yeah. a news conference on Tuesday. Yeah. They're talking about it during the game. And listen, I love the Huskies, but crap, what do you think I'm gonna lead my show? Well, I mean, you know, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What what do you think I'm gonna be talking about? Calipari, you know, yeah. and so. Um, and so, yeah, man, this is just so surreal. And, and listen, I want to reiterate, listen, I don't care if it's Pete Thamel, if it's whoever, if it's Shams coming out of whatever you had this first brother. And I'm like, as a friend, I'm so proud of you. And by the way, you know, who's the biggest, uh, you know, what, what was the old radio show that used to do like the, the, the jackass of the week or whatever. I'll tell you who it is. It's Aaron Torres. Cause you called me this morning. Uh, and I'll be honest, so my mom is in town for the Final Four, and I didn't get to see her yesterday because I was covering the games. And so I was like, bro, okay, all right, yeah, I'll, I'll hit you back later. And so, and you were like, dude, I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, you need to be on this. And I was like, I got my mom right here, dude. What am I supposed to do? I haven't, you know, I see, you know, she, I don't, I see her very often. What am I supposed yeah. to do? So, and by the way, shout, and by the way, thank you, by the way. Cause she actually had just left the house. You know, I I'm staying in Phoenix here. She had just left to go back to her place. I was going to get ready to do all my national championship preview stuff. And you waited until she left, uh, until all, everything was done to break that story. So, um, in oh. all, yeah, in all seriousness, I want to reiterate Westmore on Twitter at W E S S underscore more. Uh, what time is your radio show tomorrow? Tomorrow we'll be on from 1 to 4 Central. It's uh, 1037thebuzz.com. We have an app. You can download the app. Just go to your store, app store, and look for 1037thebuzz. Download it there. You can watch us on Twitter, Facebook, or uh, YouTube also. So it's very easy to find. If you want to listen to us and find out more tomorrow, we'll be there from, from 1 to 4 Central time. All right. We we uh, have, if, if my math is correct, we got a shit ton of people watching, man. But listen, if one or two questions, Matt, and then he's got to go. If, if you have anything ready, if not, do you, do, do you have, this is a great question, actually. KJ asked, do you have any sense of if some of Calipari's recruits, six freshmen are committed, three McDonald's All-Americans? Go ahead. What do you think? What do you think uh, Calipari, the recruiter? that's worked so hard to get those guys to commit to him to Kentucky. Do you think he's just going to give up and go, Hey, yeah, that was fun. I know we got to know each other and that's what it's all about. It's relationships, right? It's just like, you know, people were kind of upset. Some of the Razorback fan, you know, Razorback players were leaving after Musselman. Well, they came to Arkansas of to course. play for Musselman. And so Musselman's gone. So I get it. These, these fresh, they don't want to, you know, they, they're going to play for Musselman probably at USC. No, I, I think with their relationship that he's built with them, yeah, uh, I would I, I would be disappointed if he hadn't called and said, hey, and you probably saw the news. I'm going to Arkansas. I'm so excited to go to Arkansas. You wouldn't believe how passionate they are, what it's like for one of their games. I would love to have you come see Fayetteville, come on a, on a visit, and just see what, you know, if you're open to the idea of coming and playing in the SEC still but just at a different school. Yeah, and I would say, obviously, a fan base that's going to be fired up, a fan base. And by the way, all Cal's got to do, videos of the Auburn game rushing the floor, videos of whatever. I will say, from my perspective, somebody from the New York area actually reached out. They have a five-star kid, Boogie Fland, who's committed. And this guy's kind of tied in with St. John's. He's like, Boogie Fland, back on the table, baby. And this was before – this was after your report. You were the first one to have it. And then, of course, everything since then. But – so I, I to 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 answer your I think you put it best. 
great recruiter. It's about relationships. Um, and, and by the way, let me say this too, real quick, Wes, if you don't mind me just sharing some of the things that I've observed from Calipari, like yeah. everyone, you know, craps on the one and done model, this and that it worked this year. It freaking worked. You finished second in the sec. You yeah. beat Tennessee on the final day of the regular season. They go to the elite eight. If they're not playing Purdue, they're probably going to the final four. If they're not playing UConn either, you beat Bama. You smacked Bama. And so I still think Calipari has a lot of a lot of juice left in the tank. Now I was very critical too. I don't want people in the comments saying, "Oh, Torres, you're trying to cover your bases." No, I was no, I was critical. Of, I was critical as hell. I really was. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that I, I've never felt like he. I've never felt like it's the wrong situation. I, I never felt like he was doing it the wrong way. I just felt like in the tournament it hasn't clicked for whatever. Uh, but it'll be fascinating, Wes. I'll tell you what, um, dude, go home. Have a glass of wine, whatever whatever it is that that you consume. Um, Tito's. Oh no way! I got a half a bottle right here, bro. Man, no, I'm big Tito's guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, man. That's that's all I can drink these days, man. I have a couple of those. Glass of water. Go to bed. I'm gonna have one of these after, dude. Dude, I'm telling you, man. Go ahead. What are you gonna say? I'll get my Tito's rep to send you a bottle or two or a case. I mean, I I, I can't say no. I mean, that'd just be rude. I mean, you know. So, um. Dude, Wes, go home, man. Again, Wes Moore, uh, un Wes underscore more, W-E-S-S -S underscore more. He's the host of Out of Bounds 1 to 4 Central Time on 103.7 The Buzz. I've been on, on with you many times. Uh, I'd ask if you need me, but I don't have any information that's any good anymore. I mean, you got all the juice, um, and uh, I know the phone lines are going to be crazy, but I'm happy for you, man. Congrats on a crazy night. And, and ser let me say this too, dude, I don't even know what your phone is like, but yep. the fact that you took, we've been on here for 31 minutes and 59 seconds as we're speaking right now for you to do that, man. I, I, I am forever indebted to you. Uh, I cannot thank you enough. Like I said, you got family out on the West coast. Next time you're here, you know, Beers are on me. Rental car. You know, you don't want to sit in traffic. We'll get yeah. you. A, we'll get you a car. Whatever you need, you just tell me. All right, man. All right. I got you. We'll definitely hook up next time I'm out there and, and go get a drink. We were just talking about what well, you know is must going to USC, and now here we are, John freaky Calipari. Wow. All all comes around. It's a big circle. It is, man. Wes, thank you for the time. Yeah. I'll be honest. Producer Matt, I have no idea how to let Wes go. I, I think I know what to do. Wes, I'm going to count us down. You may be on the screen. You may not be. Okay. If if I don't see you in three, thank you again, okay? You bet. I enjoyed right. it. Three, two, one. That was Wes. Listen, if you're driving in a car right now, excuse my language, that was Wes fucking Moore, okay? Wes Moore of 103.7 The Buzz just gave us 31 minutes of time. And I'm gonna just going to reiterate it. Pete Thamel, Shams, no disrespect to those guys. Those guys work hard. By the way, I can tell you this. I have been working this Arkansas thing because, like I said, I, I thought that Will Wade was in the mix, and I've been working on it from all angles. And it's not about whatever, but I bring it up because I know how hard it is to break any story. But a story of this caliber, I really hope – that Wes is going to get the national credit that he deserves because there's, there's two elements of it. There's breaking the story, but there's also the other element of it. The other element of it is what if you're not right now? I don't think, I think Wes has built up too much credibility where his name would be impacted in the state of Arkansas, but nationally he becomes a punchline. And I don't say, I'm not saying that's fair because information changes all the time. But what Wes did today, I mean, this is outside, maybe Coach K retiring was bigger. Outside of Coach K, this is probably the biggest college basketball story since the day that John Calipari accepted the Kentucky job. Wes Moore was first. Wes underscore Moore on Twitter. Um, and I don't even know what else there is to say. I mean, I, I can add a few thoughts. I don't really have a ton else to add. Now, so many people are watching. I feel kind of obligated to keep this party going. Um, producer Matt, why, why don't, if, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll give you a couple quick thoughts first from the Kentucky perspective. Um, so Nick Lee says, Muss is losing his freaking mind right now. All this NIL money is coming in. <laughs> Tyson chicken stock to the moon says Nick Lee. 
I think what Wes said was incredible, and I think it was right, is the idea, um, the idea that um the idea that um basically is that John Calipari is coming in, first of all, must and this, by the way, I know Arkansas fans don't want to hear it right now. You're so thrilled about John Calipari, but Mus owes uh, Mus is owed a debt of gratitude in this because he proved you can win, you can win at the highest level, you can recruit at an elite level, you can do whatever it is you need to do at any level that you need to do it at the school at the University of Arkansas. And so, obviously, look, he leaves, he goes to USC. John Cal, I don't think John Calipari takes this job if it isn't for Eric Muscle. So Eric Musselman, it probably is, is, is stunned at the development, but Tyson chicken stock to the moon is absolutely correct. And one thing I, I, I will say a couple of thoughts from the Calipari perspective, one Calipari, um, Calipari, one thing I have always been told about him from the beginning, remember I wrote the book on Calipari. Okay. You, you could criticize Torres for whatever. I know 40 people that know Cal. And the one thing about Cal, he is so good at networking and really just having contacts that you couldn't possibly imagine. And so I bring it up, by the way, for any of us joining, uh, Wes Moore did join us earlier. Uh, he would, you know, you can download this, go back on YouTube and watch it after the fact. But the bottom line is as follows. Okay. Is Calipari has as good a contacts as anyone, um, uh, you know, as far as his network, as far as the important people that he knows, and so the fact that he's friends with John Tyson of Tyson Chicken speaks to the network that he has, the the, the people that he has in his corner. And listen, what I think this comes down to, and, and, and Wes gave us all the facts, but it, what it comes down to is, listen, John Calipari, um, it was a crazy situation, um, but it was it was a toxic situation. And I think a couple things stand out. One, Calipari is aware of how everyone has felt about him at Kentucky. And I do think that um, he kind of understood, listen, they're bringing me back to fire me next year. And so, yes, I can stay. Yes, I can come back. But anything short, of, I mean, Kentucky fans, I know there's hundreds of you in the mentions right now. Go ahead and tell me what you think. What would it have taken for him to keep the job for 2025, 2026? Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four National Championship. And oh, by the way, you got to win during the regular season. So I think he just saw the writing on the wall. And th one thing about Calipari, man, he ain't a sucker to nobody. And what he basically said is, listen, I know what y'all been saying about me. And by the way, Kentucky fans, I've largely agreed with you. I've been as critical of Calipari as anybody. So I'm not saying you're wrong. But I uh, basically, my belief is that he basically just sat there and said, oh, I have a chance to go to another job where I'm going to have everything I need to succeed um, and I'm going to have everything I need to succeed and I can stick it to these people. And I think that was the most interesting thing that Wes said. And I think it's an important thing that Wes said is that basically um, that Calipari now has a chip on his shoulder. Okay. Like you talk, first of all, Calipari, as I said, and Kentucky fans, you might disagree. But as much as the NCAA tournament itself sucked, and it did suck, um, the plan worked. The model works. Get the best freshmen, let them ball out, and we're going to have success in the regular season. And, and, and you know, the tournament is a crapshoot. And so I was very critical of Cal. I'm not going to lie. I said he needs to think about resigning. He obviously did much better for himself by, by not resigning. Um, but I one thing I have pushed back on, one thing that I have pushed back on is the idea that the freshman model doesn't work. Now, he's going to go to Arkansas. I think Arkansas fans, you should be excited. Um, but I also think, like, you know, it's it, he's still got to win there. I mean, he's still put in position to have everything that he needs to compete at the highest level. The other thing with Cal, too, you know, he hasn't really embraced NIL, but I think part of that is the Mitch Barnhart thing where he's just not writing blank checks to kids. And so I'll be curious to see how does how does he embrace NIL? Does he let you know the collective do the negotiating on his behalf? How does all that stuff work? But you just talk about a crazy story that I can't even comprehend. I can't even comprehend what the heck we are experiencing right now. But John Calipari is going to uh, is going to Arkansas. 
Let's get to a couple questions. Co questions. I should do a little Kentucky coaching care. So, by the way, I've done 37 segments on John on John Calipari's replacement. So, what I will do is, as soon as we go final here, I will probably put out some of the Kentucky potential replacements. Um, you know, and I'll tell you what, producer Matt, why don't you go into the Kentucky uh, page on Twitter and you can go ahead and 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 share the video that I did a few weeks ago of who could potentially replace Kentucky, who could potentially replace John Calipari. Do you want to right now? Do you want to talk Kentucky replacements? I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to the Calipari perspective of this in a minute. A couple things, by the way, I, the chat, I don't even know what to do with, um, you know, uh, 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 Dan Rivera says, should I get my AT pig shirt now? Uh, yeah, baby, you should. Um, I don't, uh, uh, Channing says most of the recruits we have signed to Cal, not Kentucky. Some may stay, but most will follow Cal. I think that's the right point. I think that's the right point. Uh, Jacob Petruzzi says any shot Dan Hurley leaves UConn. All right. So really quickly, what we will do now, and we'll clip this off separately as well. Let's go ahead and go through the Kentucky replacement side of things. By the way, shout out producer Matt. I said, it's going to be an easy night. We're not going to do much. Not going to go too crazy. We might go till 6 a.m. Party of the break to what is it? Miami party of the bit city of the all till the break of dawn. Welcome to Miami. Well, welcome to freaky Calipari to Arkansas. Okay. So at the 41 21 mark, we are going to talk Kentucky coaching carousel, all that stuff. All right. 41 21. Okay. Um, so let's switch gears. Let's do the Kentucky coaching carousel perspective because, and this is interesting now, for the first time since 2009. Kentucky is set to hire a basketball coach, but I think what is important to note on this is that remember, remember, they don't owe John Calipari anything. So, so anytime there's a coaching, um, you know, availability, right? Um, the, the question becomes a couple fold. It becomes one, do you have to pay the last guy? Because if you have to pay the last guy, then sometimes you can't go out and get the guy you want. I just, I gave the example when Wes was on with us, but Ohio State paid Chris Holtman $14 million to go away. And so because of it, all of a sudden, you do not yet have the opportunity um, to, to pay the new head coach everything that you want because you're paying him $14 million to go away or $7 million or $10 million or whatever. Well, by John Calipari leaving, as the chat points out, you save $33 million by not firing him, but you also don't have to pay any sort of buyout, whether it's this year, next year, whatever. So in theory... The pool for Kentucky candidates should be through the roof. So let's talk about a couple Kentucky coaching candidates here uh, right now this second. And this segment, by the way, was started by Jacob Petruzzi, who asked, is there any chance that Dan Hurley will leave for Kentucky? What I can tell you is, again, this is the, the gift of being at the Final Four, and this is the gift of UConn being at the Final Four. Um, because I actually asked somebody at UConn that would know these things. I said, hey, just out of curiosity, do you know Dan Hurley's um, uh, do you know Dan Hurley's buyout at Kentucky? And he said, I do. And I said, what is it? Hold on one second. Okay, so. At the Final Four, saw a high-level UConn person, obviously can't share who it is. And I said, do you know Dan Hurley's buyout? And he started laughing at me. And he says, um, and, and he starts laughing. He says, why are you asking? I said, well, it's because, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I got these Kentucky fans in my mentions every time Calipari loses a game saying, we're coming after Dan Hurley. What I will tell you is Dan Hurley signed an extension. He is, I believe, the sixth highest paid coach in college basketball this season. Won his buyout. Now, listen, it can be written in a big check. It's about seven, seven and a half million. But what I will tell you is long before anybody thought John Calipari was leaving Kentucky this year, um, it has been in the works that Dan Hurley is going to get a very nice extension as well at UConn. And so, listen, because you don't have to pay Calipari anything, I am here to tell you, you, I, you can't say no. You can't say it's impossible, right? You can't say that it's impossible. Because if the buyout is around $7.58 million, that's a check that high-level boosters can write. But at the same time, is Dan Hurley going to leave after a second straight national championship? I don't think so. Um, and so, and by the way, he's going to get a new contract with a much bigger buyout. 
that does make it basically impossible. And I can't put a number on that. I can't even take a guess as to what that number would be, but it ain't going to be 7.5 million. I can tell you that right now. Um, so I don't think Dan Hurley is on the table. Uh, Nate Oates. Nate Oates is an interesting one because, and I've had a couple Alabama people hit me up. Um, let me see if we can find details on Nate Oates' new contract. Now, I apologize that this is a little um, scattered, but it, the bottom line is I, I'm just trying to do this in real time. So Nate Oates, just this month, signed a contract extension that by the time it's done, will pay him $7.5 million, okay? Um, his new buyout um, is $18 million. So listen, what I would tell you is I think if that contract – extension had not been signed and the buyout was in that seven, eight, nine million dollar range. I think that Nate Oates would be the number one phone call. By the way, I've been saying for three years that I think Nate Oates should be the number one phone call. And so why I bring it up is I just don't think he's on the table anymore. I just don't think that he is on the table because you, I don't think 18 million. I just don't think you can pay. I think Nate Oates is happy. By the way, it's worth noting um, he has an extension, by the way, shout out. Uh, I think, uh, one of my Alabama media friends is watching right now. So shout out Drew DeArmond. If you're watching Drew DeArmond, just texted me the details of the Nate Oates buyout. It is in fact, $18 million. So listen, Alabama fans, I can't say you should sleep totally well, but a couple things. One, 18 million is a lot. Then you got to pay Nate Oates, probably seven, eight, nine a year. Then you got to pay for a staff. Then you got to worry about NIL. That one does not feel realistic to me. Maybe a month ago when Calipari lost that game to Gonzaga and I said, who would you go get? Nate Oates was the number one call. Now that's probably not going to happen. I should mention, by the way, the big, big, big names that I do think Mitch Barnhart has to make a phone call to. And we've talked about these names before. I do think Jay Wright is a phone call you have to make. And you can't sit there and say he'll never coach again. He probably won't. But a couple things. First of all, he's called a couple games for CBS over the last couple years. And so he knows how great that Kentucky job is, how much John Calipari had to work with. And it's kind of worth noting, too. And remember, we talked about this. John Calipari, um, you know, he was kind of critical of Cal after the um, he was kind of critical of Cal after um, after the loss to Oakland. And he kind of said, look, I love Cal, but you can't keep doing it this way. And it kind of sounded to me like, oh, by the way, I think I could do this better than you, Coach Cal. And so with Jay Wright, listen, I don't think he's going to say yes, but remember, there's no buyout for Jay Wright. And there's no buyout for Cal. So you don't owe Cal $8, 10 $12 million. And then, oh, by the way, you don't owe Jay Wright anything to get him out of a contract because he doesn't have one. And so you can make the godfather offer to Jay Wright. You can offer Jay Wright the contract that nobody else can or nobody else would. And I'll tell you what I would do. I would get all my big boosters, the Crafts, and whoever. I, I know Joe Craft is a big booster. And, and by the way, I wouldn't even get the boosters together. You know what I would do? I would do what Rick George did at Colorado when he hired Deion Sanders. We've talked about this before. Remember when he hired Rick, uh, Rick George hired Deion Sanders, and at the introductory press conference, they told you what Deion Sanders' salary was going to be? And what did Rick, Rick George say? He was asked about, uh, Rick George was asked about, how, how are you going to get this money? Where are you going to get this money from? Rick George says, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. And I'm pretty sure you can like Deion Sanders or hate him, but you, you get the guy you want, and then you figure out the money later if it's a person the caliber of Jay Wright. And so listen, this is going to take, you know what it's going to take for Mitch Barnhart, the AD, and I don't know if he has it, and there's a lot of Kentucky fans in the comments that are commenting right now. It's going to take some big you-know-what energy to get this done. I'm not saying that Jay Wright is going to take the job. What I am saying is you have to put a contract in front of him that is so absurd that he at least has to think about it. I've said it before. If I was an AD, and I know I'm not, 10 years, $100 million. That's it. 10 years, $100 million. $10 million a year for 10 years for a decade. You are here for as long as you want to be. And we'll figure out the money later, and we'll figure out the details later, and we'll figure out NIL later, and whatever. And so, yeah, that's the call that I would make. Dan Hurley, I don't believe, is coming. 
Nate Oates, I don't believe you can get him out of the contract. You can get Jay Wright right now. And so why isn't that the call you make? By the way, you know who else gets that same call with that same contract who's probably going to say no, but you got to make the call anyway because you're freaking Kentucky and you should be going after the biggest names in college basketball? Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens should absolutely get that call. Brad Stevens should absolutely get that call because Brad Stevens is an elite basketball coach. And I think you could look at it as a negative and say, would he want to deal with the NIL portal era? He's in the NBA. He's dealing with professionals anyway. College basketball is just professional basketball on a lower level right now. And so what you do, you get with him. You say, we're going to get a, a collective together, whatever. I know Kentucky just launched its collective. And listen, they're going to handle all the negotiations. You tell us who you want, we'll make sure it gets done. And that's how it works now. And it sucks and you wish it wasn't like that. But that's how it works now. And so if I'm Mitch Barnhard, those are probably the first two calls I make. Jay Wright, say freaking no. Here's 10 years, $100 million. Here's the NIL pool. Here's your assistant coach's salary. You really want to sit behind a TV desk for the rest of your life? You're in your 60s. You're vibrant. You're handsome. Come be handsome in Lexington, baby. Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens is like 45. Let's see how old Brad Stevens is really quick. And I know I'm like totally off my rocker here. And I appreciate I, I appreciate everybody who's with me here at 12:04 Eastern Time. Brad Stevens is Brad Stevens is 47 years old. Okay, Brad Stevens is 47 freaking years old right now. That guy's gonna go just sit in an office in a cubicle for the rest of his life? No, you, you get in front of him. You, listen, this is the the Torres energy right now. One thing I'm not great at everything. I can convince you of something. You listen to this show. I convince you all the time about something you weren't thinking about. Oh, I didn't think that could happen. I didn't think this could happen. I didn't think whatever. And then I just, I get on here and it freaking happens. And so I bring it up because guess what? If I'm, if I'm Mitch Barnhart, you know, drink a cup of coffee, be ready to go and go in and say, Brad Stevens, you're 47 years old. You got 30 great years in this world. Are you going to go down? By the way, are you going to go down as the dude who never won a college title, never won an NBA title, um, never, uh, never, we're getting a new report. Give me a sec. We'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but are you going to go down as the guy that never won a championship? You don't care. You're just going to go, you just walk, you just walked 50, 60, 70, 80 years on this planet, on this big blue marble. What'd you accomplish? Oh, you made the finals one time. Who cares? Oh, you made a title game with Butler. Who cares? You lost. Come here, be part of the greatest tradition in the history of college basketball, and be the guy that we need right now. Brad Stevens is the name that I would absolutely call. And it's, again, the Jay Wright thing. Make him say no. The other names that I would call, I would call. First of all, I'll say this: unpopular opinion. Chris Beard is clearly there for the taking. I mean, you just heard Wes Moore. You just heard Wes Moore. By the way, I, I'm thinking about how I'm going to do this podcast tomorrow, piece it all together, because I have a national championship preview uh, to, to share, and uh, I don't even know what the heck is going on. Um, all right, so let's keep it going. By the way, I just got a text from a UConn buddy. Is Hurley going to leave for, for Kentucky? Um, all right, this is what I uh, – back to um, back to the coaching carousel. By the way, this is the most scattered segment that we're ever going to clip off on this YouTube channel. I apologize. So we've talked Nate Oates. We've talked Dan Hurley. We've talked – uh, we've talked Brad Stevens. We've talked Jay Wright. Uh, who else? So Chris Beard, I'm a Chris Beard guy. Okay. And Chris Beard, the thing about Chris Beard, I respect a few things about him and I understand there's a lot of baggage. I know I just used the word respect and I know that some people will not respect the decision if that's made, but he's won everywhere he goes and he's won at places that it's not easy to win. He won at Little Rock. He won at Texas Tech. By the way, you could criticize whatever. He had Texas at number one in the country a year ago when he was fired. Now, we know why he was fired. We know what he was accused of. We know charges were dropped. But at the end of the day, it doesn't freaking matter. It does not matter. What matters right now, what matters this second, is the fact that Chris Beard can be had. Arkansas should have had him. They didn't. Kentucky, you can go get him. Make it freaking happen. Bring him in. You will win. You will win at the highest level. And Chris Beard, to his credit, 
has the blueprint. He is the guy. He is the guy that he is the guy that knows what it's like to build a number one team in the country, knows what it's like to recruit five stars, signed two five star McDonald's All Americans last year in his one full recruiting cycle at Texas, knows how to use the portal as well as anybody. Go get Chris Beard. And then finally, listen, I think the other name that everyone's going to float out is Scott Drew. I don't like it. I don't love it. But I do think that's that's a name that's out there. I understand he's a national championship winning head coach, okay? I get it. I guess my concern with Scott Drew, he's been at Baylor for a long time. And first of all, I've said this about Baylor. Now, the good thing about Scott Drew, he's going to bring VJ Edgecombe with him, who's one of the top two or three high school recruits in the country, okay? But at the same time, why I bring it up, why I'm not a huge Scott Drew guy, he's never faced a moment of real criticism or real whatever you want to call it uh, at, at, at Baylor, okay? This is a guy that, you know, took over an impossible job. And to get them to win the national championship was incredible. But, you know, Baylor's not a, 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 a fishbowl place like Kentucky is. Baylor's not a place where every move you make is, is, is analyzed and overanalyzed and thought about. And every recruit you contact has 10 reporters contacting them the next day to learn more about them. And so if I am Kentucky, I don't know that Scott Drew is a name that I love. I would much rather have Chris Beard, who has proven time and time again in the portal era that he can do it. Scott Drew, by the way, listen, that national championship team was incredible. But I, I, I've said this a few times, a couple things. One, if there's no pandemic, that team does not come back. Davion Mitchell was ready to declare. Jared Butler was ready to declare. And what ended up happening because of the pandemic, those guys, their season was canceled and they couldn't go through NBA draft workouts. And so all the guys that weren't quite sure what their draft status was, they couldn't get in front of teams. And so they all come back. They weren't going to come back. They do come back. The other thing with Scott Drew, he built that team in the one-year sit-out era. So outside of Jared Butler, all those guys were one-year sit-outs. Davion Mitchell, Macy Oteague, uh, Chama the, 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 the all the big guys. And so he did that, and he did it in an era that no longer exists. And so I like him, but listen, lost in the second round this year, the NCAA tournament lost in the second round last year, the NCAA tournament, I believe three years in a row, he hasn't got out of the first weekend. So I am not a Scott Drew guy, not for Kentucky. Let's keep it going. Uh, I don't even know what kind of questions, Matt Painter. We got so many of these puppies. Listen, somebody said Patino. All right, let's really talk about Patino real quick. Okay. Um, I don't think he's coming. I don't, I don't know the contract numbers. I don't think anybody really knows the contract numbers because it's a private school, but he's in New York. It's where he wants to be. One thing I can tell you for sure about Patino, when it was clear he was in his last year at Iona, okay, what's been known for a long time, he wanted a big time job. He wanted one last run at the, the, the highest level of success, okay? Highest level of success. But I bring it up because you know what, all, what else happened? is that he also said, I'm not living everywhere. Like Texas Tech, I believe, was the school that like tried to make a run at him. And he's like, respectfully, I'm not moving to Lubbock, Texas. I'm sorry, it ain't happening. Georgetown, there was rumors of interest. He's like, I don't want to be in D.C. He wants to be in New York. He wants to be in Miami. Now, I get that he has the horse farms in Lexington. He, you know, He's huge in horse racing. But I think he wants to be in New York. I think he's enjoying that rebuild. Now, if this happened a year from now and the NIL stuff is weird, and by the way, St. John's has raised their NIL. Uh, Mike Rapoli, the, the, the vitamin water guy, has, has pledged over a million dollars in NIL if that's what it takes. So I just bring it up because I don't think Patino uh, is uh, – I don't think Patino is, uh, is, is coming. So those are the Kentucky candidates. Listen, I'm telling you, I don't think Dan Hurley's realistic. I don't think Nate Oates is realistic. I do think, Jay Wright, you want to make him think. I do think, um, Brad Stevens, you want to make him think. I don't know what else there is to say. Holy crap, we have so many people live here. I'm just trying to keep up. What are the other questions? I was about to go to sleep, man. Bruce Pearl. Now, that's an interesting one. Producer Matt, you're not camera ready. Producer Matt's over there. He's, 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 Producer Matt is an Auburn alum. Bruce Pearl, we, I'd have to look at the contract situation. I mean, the only problem with Bruce Pearl, he's like 63, 64 years old. So, um, I mean, this is insane. Uh, this is insane. 
I don't know what else there is to say about it. Let, let's get to some of the questions. So Bruce Pearl, by the way, can can I? would anyone mind if I stepped away and just got a glass of water? I recorded like 30 minutes on the national championship game. I've been on 30 minutes live, this, that, the other thing. Um, give me two seconds. I'm just going to go get some water real quick. Then we'll get back to some of your questions. Give me a second. Okay. What other questions you guys got? What other questions you guys got? All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Uh, I'm back. I got some water, by the way. Um, let's keep it going. Questions. All right, so a couple names here. Mick Cronin. Mick Cronin's buyout's way too big. Not happening. Um, Bruce Pearl, I think he's too old. Listen, Mark, so somebody brings up Mark Pope as a dark horse, okay? So I actually said this, Mark Pope's first year, they were preseason top 10, top 15. Um, preseason top 10, top 15, or I take that back. He was postseason top 10, top 15, and um, he, was, uh, he was at BYU, and they were like a top 10 team, and then obviously the tournament got canceled. Wasn't ever fully able to recapture that magic, but what I would say, I think it's become pretty clear that he's a good coach, got BYU back to the tournament, and I think there's a ceiling at BYU. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he is um, LDS, so I think he's comfortable being there, obviously a very religious school. But remember, he played at Kentucky under Rick Patino. That's a guy, listen, I don't know how the fan base would feel about it, but he's an alum. He recruit. I am here to tell you players adore him. Players adore him. I think, by the way, it would unite certainly the old school players that played under Patino. I don't know how a, a Calipari, Tyrese Maxey, Jamal Murray, et cetera, would feel about it. But um, but uh, but yeah, I, I I think Mark Pope is a good name. By the way, if you're listening on podcast, I apologize. We're just trying to get to as many of these questions as we can. Uh, by the way, we did for any Arkansas fan that's still in, we just dropped our big pig invasion t-shirts. I can't believe I didn't do that earlier. I'm a freaking idiot. We would be completely sold out by now. Let's keep the questions going. I like Shaka Smart. I worry about Shaka Smart because um, he is um, he is uh, he's had the he's had the opportunity at the highest level of college basketball, and that's the only thing that would concern me right now about that whole situation. Is he wasn't great at Texas? Listen, he wants to recruit a certain type of player and play a certain type of way. That's what he's comfortable doing. We just talked about Calipari. We just talked about how he is comfortable in the one and done world. And so because of it, um, because of it, um, because of it, you look at Shaka Smart, he's comfortable playing the small ball, full court press, this and that. And I think that is a tough sell to elite recruits. It's why it didn't work at Texas. By the way, really quickly, and I know I'm bouncing around. I apologize. Um, but at the end of the day, here's the bottom line. I just saw Jeff Goodman went ahead and tweeted out, let's make sure to give credit to, to Wes Moore. Um, Jeff, I, I like Jeff and I'll tell you this, man, Jeff is, I think Jeff deserves some props for giving Wes his due because Wes was all over this. If you missed it, Wes Moore, the, the person who broke this story joined us earlier. Um, Wes is, I am so indebted to Wes right now. I am so indebted to Wes and what he did for me tonight. Because I texted him half jokingly. I was like, there's no way this guy's going to join me. The guy freaking joined me. It was incredible. So I hope I hope Wes is getting his flowers. Um, and uh, this is just bananas, man. Who woke up? So I'll tell you this. So I'm just, you know, now I'm just talking. But, you know, I try to share everything with you as best as I can. Um Hold on one sec. Got to put out a big pig invasion. People are mad at me. I haven't done the big pig invasion yet. I haven't done the big pig invasion yet. 
Everybody knows the big pig invasion, right? Everybody knows the big pig invasion. I have not put it out, and I don't think I have it on my desktop anymore. That's how you know it was a bad season in Arkansas. I don't have the big pig invasion uh, graphic on the desktop. Give me a second here, okay? Give me a second. One second. We'll cut some of this out of the the post game, uh, the the post sound because, uh, yeah. Let's see here. Hold on one second. We got to get a big pig invasion thing. Tr keep dropping your questions. We are going to get to them momentarily. By the way, Kentucky fans, how are you feeling? I would be curious for your perspective on this. Um, I just can't believe that we're here, man. I, I, I you know, I'll tell you this. Um, I just got. I, I'll just tell you this. Um. You look at um, this whole situation, man. You look at this whole situation, and it is banana land. Like, it is banana land. And what I was going to say was, so I was at the Final Four. And so I'll tell you guys a little bit of backstory now, okay? So all weekend long, so so the Chris Beard stuff breaks on, must leaves on, must leaves on, what was it, Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon beard as Westmore just told you was the leader in the clubhouse. No doubt about it. Um, hold on. So beard was a leader in the clubhouse. Then Jerome Tang. And, and I had heard the same as Wes that Jerome Tang was not, uh, was not, of not, not, I don't want to say he wasn't a viable candidate, but that he wasn't interested in the job. Okay. And so why I bring it up, I'm at the final four and I'm telling you, man, it was crazy because there were, let me just put it this way. There were a lot of people hitting me up. What do you know? But then just as importantly, um, there were also a lot of people just trying to get a feel for, okay, who's realistic, who's not. And so I'm working and I'm working and I'm working and I'm talking to as many people. And I don't know what burner account or whomever was the first one to have it. Um, but I bring it up because the, the, to have the report, to have the rumor. Okay. And I'm not saying who had it because Wes Moore was the first person to break the story, but I bring it up because, um, I bring it up because, uh, uh, you know, you started hearing Calipari at some point on Saturday and I checked in with a few people and people were like, it's not as crazy as you think Taurus. It's not as crazy as you think. And so for us to come full circle, it is absolutely incredible credit to arkansas i'm just there's so many questions i don't even know where to start um kentucky fans say i'm happy he's gone calipari calling the hogs at 3 p.m uh, 3 p.m on tuesday so we'll see uh by the way thank you to we have a couple super chats nathan fox we appreciate you um uh, let's see here. Marvin Lewis. <laughs> wow. Marvin Lewis. We're getting everybody in this chat. He says, I feel great. Calipari is over one championship since 2012. Bye bye. Cal is a politician. Woo pig suey. Um, there's just, I mean, there's just so much to peel back. If we got any Arkansas fans in, tell me your thoughts. I mean, I'm just, I'm so fascinated because I can only look at it at, from the perspective of how Kentucky fans spoke about, um, about this Calipari situation. And so, uh, so, so I don't know how others on the outside feel about him, but I do think I keep going back to that, that Westmore comment that, um, that basically essentially, um, that John Calipari is going to come in with a chip on his shoulder. And that to me is kind of the most amazing thing. You get an angry John Calipari with the talent, with the resources, with this, with that. Um, it's just it's it's surreal to think about Cal with a chip on his shoulder out to prove anybody wrong. Keep keep the questions coming. We might have to get a new stock of Big Pig Invasion tees, baby, because the Big Pig Invasion is so effing back. The Big Pig Invasion is so effing back. All right, let, let let's keep it going. Um. Arkansas fans, make sure to chime in. By the way, we are still going so strong. We hate him till we got him. Now we love him. Proven winner. Woo, pig, suey. Why would he be angry? Uh, somebody asked. Okay. So first of all, Michelle says, next Kentucky coach. We did about a 10-minute segment on that. Uh, make sure to check it out. We'll be live here for a little while longer as all of you come in. But I bring it up because we talked about the next head coach. Why would – what was the question that we lost here? Um, 
best coach for Kentucky and Cal. Go Hogs. Why would he be angry? Well, he'd be angry because the, the fan base has been toxic. The media who covers him has been toxic. I include myself. I, I, I've been very critical of him. I said he should resign after the Oakland game because I knew that Kentucky wasn't in position to fire him. And I said he's not living up to the standard that he set, that Kentucky has set, et cetera. And he owes it to that fan base to not keep stealing money from him. And so I only bring it up because, yes, it got very toxic. It got very toxic there. Um, it, it, you know, a lot of a lot of anger from the fan base and a lot of anger directed towards him, you know, directed towards him in terms of just who he is as a person. He's lost this. He's lost this edge. He's lost that. He's done this. He's done that. And what's crazy is um, I just think a lot of um, I just think a lot of people um you know, I think I think there was just so much negativity. So he's going to have a chip on his shoulder. He's going to be angry. It was a toxic relationship, and so whatever. Uh, the peak says thought Arkansas was going to get stuck with some first time or huge hire if Hunter Yurichek can pull it off. Well, guess what? It's it's done, baby. I mean, it, it's like I don't even know what there is to say here. By the way, let me put it. Hmm, I'll tell you, I got a text right now in real time. There is somebody that believes that Nate Oates is a candidate at Kentucky. $18 million buyout. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, John, what's his name? Joe Kraft. Hey, listen, if I had $18 million, I'd go buy Nate Oates out of that contract too. I'm just not saying that it's going to happen. Um, and so it, it, what a fucking night. Excuse my language. What a night. What a night. There's so much to react to. There's so many tweets that I could be sending out right now that would help my cause, but we have like 13,000 live people with us right now. So, man, oh man, oh man. I, I'm just rambling at this point, but I think you guys are enjoying my rambling. I mean, imagine waking up. Imagine when Jerome Tang removes his name from the job on Friday afternoon. John Calipari by Sunday night is your Arkansas basketball head coach. It's just like you can't even comprehend it. I still don't even know how to feel like, what is it going to be like when Cal calls the hogs? What is that going to be like? What is it going to be like when he's in that red polo, like the Eric Musselman polo instead of that Royal blue? I will say, by the way, and I, I have, you know, some thoughts on, on Cal as well. I do think it's interesting from the perspective of the way he just kind of burned his legacy in, at Kentucky. I mean, he's got a lot of great players in the NBA. And it's weird, right? I mean, it's weird to think about a Devin Booker or a Tyrese Maxey not either not going to be able to come back or that their coach left for another job. But listen, this is how the how the whole situation works sometimes. My phone is just on fire right now. Let's keep it going. Who else we got? Who else we got? They didn't fire him. He has a chip on his shoulder last year, didn't he? Glad he's leaving Kentucky for real. Who is Nados? I don't know who Nados is. There's a good reporter at On3 named Pete Nakos. I don't know if that's who you might be talking about. One wins active coaches. I don't know what that means. Some of y'all need to learn how to type a little bit better. Y'all know Arkansas fans, we are all about the turn up of whoever is leading us, says the Peaks. Calipari, Pack, hitting it good. Um, just roll the ball out there and let him play. Cal has said the revenge tour was coming since 2020. Yeah, I know. Cause I made revenge tour t-shirts. We didn't sell very many of them. So, um, this is just bananas. What else we got? Let's keep the questions coming. I, I mean, I can't get off air right now. Right. I mean, we got between Twitter and, and YouTube, we have 13,000 people watching right now for people who missed it. We'll clip off the, the, the candidate segment. NATO has an $18 million buyout. I don't think you can get him out of that contract. Um, I, I just don't Hurley has a seven and a half million dollar contract buyout. Um, uh, so yeah, so I don't think her, and, and I know for a fact, UConn was going to renegotiate with him anyway, this off season to make sure that he knew how much he was valued by that university. Um, I would call Jay Wright. I would call Brad Stevens, make him say no. We did a whole segment. I'll clip it off. I'll make sure that it's up and live and available. But my freaking goodness. By the way, you know UConn and Purdue are playing for a national championship next year? Uh, I, well, I don't even know what to say about that. Like, I don't even know what to say. This is unprecedented. And by the way, for people who missed it, Wes Moore, who broke this story, did come live with us. If you missed his insight, please make sure to go back. 
please make sure to follow Wes on Twitter at Wes Moore. Uh, I've known him for years. He's always been a great guy. And as I said, for people who missed it, um, for people who missed it, he called Wes Moore called me at, let me see. I'll, t- I'll tell you what time I could just tell you what time he called me. By the way, my wife is going to kill me. She has no idea any of this is going on. Westmore called me at 11.01 Pacific time. So that was probably about 2 p.m. Eastern. Uh, uh, Westmore called me and um, and uh, and he, he called me and I didn't pick up his call. So credit to Westmore here um, because it is it is insane. I uh, let me see here. I got to find a tweet to send my wife here so that she knows that I am not just out on the town in Scottsdale having a good time. By the way, shout out to me. I was going to have a nice, easy, relaxing night tonight. Uh... How do you like them apples? What are your, what other questions we got? What other questions we got? If you missed it, uh, make sure, yeah, Wes, I see True Soldier said, uh, Wes, is, I just followed Wes. He is a god. Um, I agree 100%. I agree 100% on Wes. Um, listen, I, you know, I said it about Wes earlier. We're getting so many people coming in. I, I'm sorry if I'm reiterating for people who have been here for a while. But I give Wes so much credit because um, I give Wes so much credit, and I'll tell you why. It's not just that Wes broke the story. It's if something changed and he was wrong, people would have deemed him the the laughing stock of the country, even if it's not accurate. Even you know, because stuff changes all the time. It's true until it's not. And so he put his name on it. He put his name on it. And I just give him so much credit because if he if something changed, if John Calipari pulled out at the eleventh hour, guess what ends up happening? He becomes a punchline. I said it before, his credibility is not in jeopardy because he's great at what he does. But for people who don't know him, that credibility is in question. So credit to him, man. He had it. By the way, I've said it a million times. Thank you to him for joining us. Um, Here we go. Bob M says, 38 years ago, Eddie Sutton said he'd crawl on his belly to coach at UK. How'd that work out? Cal will excel at Arkansas. Listen, I I, I think it's it's crazy. I think it's going to be a great restart for Cal. I can't sit here and say what it's going to be for Kentucky without knowing who they get. Now, I will say I think they needed a fresh start. I think everybody needed to be able to um, – I think everybody needed to be able to um, to just start over, to start fresh, whatever. But I just bring it up because I can't sit here and say what it means for Kentucky until I know who's replacing him. But I do think for Cal, it'll be good. He's going to have a chip on his shoulder. He wants to prove people wrong. Will it work? Will it not? I mean, I think he's, I mean, he finished second in the SEC this year. I would guess a lot of those recruits are going to come with him. I don't know if all of them will, you know, Jaden Quaintance, five-star center, by the way, Arkansas fans get to know the name Jaden Quaintance, five-star center. He is, how about this? He's 17 years old. He's not eligible for the NBA draft for two more years. And so he's coming to college next year. You are going to have him for two years if he follows Calipari. Now, I will say, I don't think Travis Perry, the Kentucky High School Player of the Year, is coming. Um, I don't think my guess would be Boogie Fland, I think, reopens his recruitment and maybe very seriously reconsiders. Matter of fact, let's do a little quick segment on that. Producer Matt, let's time code this so we can figure so we can clip this off as well. Okay. Um, so we are at 118 on this show. And so let's talk about it. I just got a question. What happens to John Calipari's recruiting class? And do they come with him to Arkansas? And so what I would say about that, let me go ahead and put put a little tweet out on the Arkansas page talking about who's coming with, with Coach Cal to Arkansas. Hold on one sec. All right, let's keep this party going. Let's keep this party going. All right, so we're reacting live. So, Producer Matt, I'm going to give you, uh, let's do a a little bit of a different time code 
only because of this blabbering that I'm doing right now. All right. So new time code, ignore the old one. We are at 11957. All right. Let me give myself a new reintroduction. Okay. So the question that was just asked in the chat, who is coming with John Calipari to Arkansas? So Kentucky right now has six kids committed for the class of 2024. Okay. Let's go ahead and go through them really quick. By the way, I'll say this, met Joe Tipton. I've met Joe Tipton before, had a great conversation with him at the final four. Great kid. That's going to be a must follow over these next couple of days. Joe Tipton is a beast and he's going to be all over this. But anyway, Tucky has six players committed. Let's go through them really quick. Jaden Quaintance, 6'9 center, number eight player in the country, according to 24-7 sports. Boogie Fland, uh, uh, number 26 player ranked in America, 6'2 guard. Santo Cyril. Number 46 nationally, six foot 10 center. Travis Perry, 73 nationally, point guard from Kentucky. And then two commitments that have not signed letters of intent. Carter Knox, the number 20th ranked player in the class uh, from, uh, from Tampa. Billy Richmond, uh, who is from uh, who is from Camden, New Jersey, whose dad played for Calipari. So let's go through the players that I think are realistically coming to Kentucky and who I think are not, or who are coming to Arkansas and who I think are not. Let's start with Jaden Quaintance. Listen, Jaden Quaintance committed to Kentucky over Missouri, okay? Certainly Missouri's going to try to get involved. Everybody's going to try to get involved. But at the same time, this feels like a guy that will follow Calipari to the University of Arkansas, okay? Because at the end of the day, he committed to Kentucky. He wanted to be with Calipari. And as I just said, the important thing to know about Jaden Quaintance, okay? Six foot nine center, number eight recruit in the country. He has, he's 17 years old. Remember, to be NBA draft eligible, you have to be 19 years old in the year of your NBA draft. So essentially, guys that are that are in the 2024 draft have to be at least 19 years old this calendar year. Okay. So Jaden Quaintance will not be draft eligible until 2026. So he reclassified. He wanted to play at least one year of college basketball, reevaluate. You could potentially have this kid for two years, Arkansas fans. Six foot nine. You know, he reminds me a little bit of Boogie Cousins. Athletic, but he athletic. Can he put the ball on the floor a little bit? All that good stuff. But the key with him, he is going to play for two years of college basketball. By the way, the professional options that seemed so good a year ago are no longer there. Remember, he could go to the, the thought was maybe he goes to Kentucky for or a year. And then he goes to overtime elite or he goes to the G League Ignite. The G League Ignite is done. It doesn't exist anymore. He's kind of got to stay in college for two years. Could he go overseas? Sure. But who the heck wants to go overseas? So I just bring it up because that's a kid who's probably going to play college basketball for two years. And I think he is a guy that is going to potentially follow John Calipari to Arkansas. Player Boogie Fland. As I said, number 26 ranked player in America. He is signed to Kentucky, six foot two guard, 170. I'll say this the Kentucky staff did an incredible job with this kid. He was down in Kentucky and Indiana, um, down in Kentucky and Indiana, chose Kentucky. But what is interesting about Boogie Fland is this one is interesting. He's from New York. And as I said at some point on this live stream that we're now an hour 25 into, um, he one of the first texts I got was from a recruiting guy in New York who said, Torres, I am here to tell you, Boogie Fland has been made aware that John Calipari is not going to be the Kentucky head coach next year. They told him to ask out of his scholarship. Now, the question becomes, can a St. John's get in the mix? Can somebody else get in the mix? I think St. John's would be a real player there. And I think it just depends on what the sell is to Boogie Fland. Come to Arkansas. Put the ball in your hands. Let's go. Be ready. Do this. Do that. All that good stuff. I think that will be one that Calipari has to battle for a little bit because there's going to be a lot of interest. He's not really from the region. I think he was going to Kentucky to play for Cal. So I do think he would be a, a kind of a natural fit there. But I also could see, again, a lot of those Northeast schools getting involved. A lot of, um, you know, remember, UConn's going to need players after this year. So I think that there's a very good chance that a lot of people are going to get involved. I'm not sold on um, I'm not sold on um, 
I'm not sold on Boogie Fland going to uh, – I'm not sold on Boogie Fland following John Calipari to Arkansas. Let's keep it going. Santo Surreal, he's kind of a, a power forward kind of guy. Um, listen, I like him. I don't love him. I think he'd be a good two, three-year college player. And he was really the guy that was recruited for what Kentucky lacked this year, which was size, which was physicality, which was toughness, which was a lot of the things that they needed. Not very skilled. Six foot ten, has a lot of work to do. My guess is he's probably interested in following John Calipari to the University of uh, uh, to the University of Arkansas. Overtime elite kid. Now I will say there was a there was talk that um, potentially he was a guy that might not even uh, come with with uh, John Calipari. Uh, uh, there was let me put it this way: with Santo Surreal, there was talk that it was at least possible that when everything, when all the crap hit the fan with Kentucky. And there was talk about, you know, they're going to have to do this. They're going to have to do that. They're going to have to, you know, make all these changes. One of the things was the administration wanted less freshmen. And there was a little buzz that that he was going to have to be let out of his scholarship because he wasn't the quick fix player. Santo Surreal, I think, will have an open recruitment. I, I think he's another one that probably ends up at Arkansas. I think you get the two big guys, Jaden Quaintance and Santo Surreal. Travis Perry, Kentucky State Player of the Year. Listen, I can confirm this because it came out during his recruitment. Calipari didn't really want him. But they had to offer him because he is the all-time leading scorer in the state of Kentucky. And they kind of offered him and said, do not commit here. We do not want you. Um, and he committed anyway. And he's just like, screw it. I want to play at Kentucky. I believe I can play. Uh, I can transfer out if I'm not good. And so I'm pretty comfortable saying he will not be going to Arkansas. And I think it's the opposite. I think it's he's by far the most likely to stay committed to Kentucky I'd be stunned if he played anywhere other than Kentucky next year, regardless of who the head coach is. The two commitments that are currently uh, uh, committed but not yet signed, Carter Knox, McDonald's All-American. Arkansas fans, if you need to know about this kid, I did a commitment video when he committed to Kentucky back about three weeks ago. He is the brother of Kevin Knox. Kevin Knox played for John Calipari at Kentucky, then went to the NBA, okay? Six foot five, wing, super athletic, uh, future NBA player. Is he a one and done? I don't know. I think he's good. I think with the right coaching, the right system, the right style, the right this, the right that, I think there's a possibility um, that he very much could be a superstar. But he's not guaranteed. But I think he'll be a very good college basketball player next year, especially if he plays in the same system that John Calipari implemented this year at Kentucky. I'll be blunt. I think he is one that goes to, uh, follows John Calipari to Arkansas. If you look at his recruitment, his final four was the following. It was Kentucky. It was Arkansas, or Arkansas. I'm, I'm all over the place. It's Kentucky. It was Louisville. It was, um, it was Kentucky. It was Louisville. Louisville has since fired its head coach. Kenny Payne was his lead recruiter. Kenny Payne is gone, okay? So there's that. So, Kentucky, Louisville, Louisville's out of the picture. South Florida, because he's from Tampa, and the G League Ignite. G League Ignite is gone. Louisville has a new coaching staff that the school has, or the family has no relationship with at all. I'm sorry. I don't think he's going to Louisville. I don't think he's going to South Florida. He's certainly not going to G League Ignite. And here's the thing. You can sit there and say, well, he's going to reopen his recruitment. He just committed a few weeks ago. If he was interested in other schools and other places, he could have. he didn't have to commit when he did. I think he's going to Arkansas. Lastly, and this is an interesting one, Billy Richmond from Camden, New Jersey. But Billy Richmond's father played for John Calipari at the University of Memphis. Why is that important? Well, Billy Richmond's dad owns restaurants in Memphis. Well, listen, Arkansas fans, you know I'm not great with geography, but I know Memphis borders that natural state, baby. And so when I look at this, He's playing in Jersey, but his dad is really based out of Memphis. This is kind of a win-win. You can go play at Arkansas. You can play for Calipari, the person that the family trusts. And oh, by the way, you can do it closer to home. So in my opinion, that is the recruiting class as it stands. Jaden Quaintance, I believe, will be an Arkansas Razorback. Uh, Boogie Fland, I do think that one, I think he's going to look at some real options. Sampto Cyril, I think he'll probably follow Calipari to Arkansas. Travis Perry, I think he's the most likely to stay. Not only not at Arkansas, I, I'm, I, I can say with certainty he is not going to Arkansas. 
Um, but I could see the scenario where he does stay at Kentucky. And I think Carter Knox and Billy Richmond are very likely going to Kentucky or going to Arkansas. All right. Couple other things. Knox to Louisville, most likely. I don't buy that. Okay. I, I don't because he has no relationship with Pat Kelsey. He's got the relationship with Calipari. Um, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. By the way, somebody said that Jack's Jack Pilgrim says that he believes Kentucky or that Dan Hurley's candidate. Love Jack, respect Jack. And, and I'm not trying to be the Yukon Homer guy. Um I um I I I don't think so. I actually feel very confident saying that he will not. Um, he is going to be one of the two or three highest paid coaches next year. He is going to get a contract extension. I, I don't, I don't buy, I respect Jack and his reporting. He knows Kentucky better than I do. I feel pretty confident saying I know UConn better than he does. I don't believe it's really an option. Let's keep it going. Big Jim Slade has asked this question two or three times. Will John Calipari and Hunter Yurchek still be at Arkansas in five years or will it implode before then? I don't think it implodes. Because I think the standard at Arkansas isn't – like he Calipari set the standard so high, so early, early in the Arkansas run, or early in the Kentucky run. I'm getting my schools all confused right now. We're probably going to get out of here in a couple minutes. But he set the standard so high that the standard then, of course, when you're only making Elite 8s and Sweet 16s, it's not enough. And then obviously the last year or two, it certainly wasn't enough, okay? But I bring it up because you now look at you now look at where he is starting. And yes, I get it. Yes, I get it. I understand that Arkansas, the level, the standard has been so high set by Eric Musselman. But I think Cal Perry's going to get time. He's going to bring in players. He's going to bring in new energy. And if he's not there in five years, it's because guess what? It's because guess what? Here's the crazy thing. If he's not there in five years, it's okay. And I'll tell you why. It's because of what Wes Moore said on this show. And for people just joining us, Wes Moore, the guy who broke this story, um, was on this show earlier tonight. And Wes Moore said, Wes Moore said, he said this is so important for Arkansas because there was such a fear that when Eric Musselman left that it was all over, that it was never going to happen ever again for Arkansas, that it was over, that it was a wrap, that it was this, that it was that, that they were never going to succeed at the level that they did um, under Eric Musselman. And so this Calipari's just got to make a couple sweet 16s, a couple elite eights, a final four. If Calipari makes a final four, I don't want to oversell it. I do think that, um, I do think that, um, he gets a statue because Arkansas fans have been craving that final four. He wins a national championship. It's over. Jacob Petruzzi has asked two or three times. Do you think UConn will jump into the boogie Fland mix? I do. And, and, you know, being around UConn all this week, you know, I could tell you is, is they're going to need players. I mean, they're going to lose at least four starters off this team. I would guess Caravan maybe test the draft waters. They have a two-man high school class coming in. Um, Hassan Diara, our buddy, um, basically, um, our buddy Hassan Diara basically does not, um, you know, know yet if he's going to come back for another year. And so I bring it up. By the way, somehow the YouTube just showed the part where I got up to get water. But anyway. I think Boogie Flan will be in the mix. I don't know what he's looking for in a school. Um, obviously, the fit with Calipari would be perfect, but he comes to UConn. I think there's a reasonable chance if Asan Diara doesn't come back, he's going to have the ball in his hands. So I think it's possible. Obviously, Dan Hurley has prioritized bigger guards, but more than anything, Dan Hurley has prioritized. Um, Dan Hurley has prioritized. Um, Dan Hurley has prioritized uh, um, big guards but also offense, and Boogie Flan can put the ball in the basket. And so, yes, 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 yes. I, I, I think they probably at least make a call. A couple more. Does Sean Miller still work at UK? I think Sean Miller works great at UK. And I've said this about Sean Miller a couple times, is that with Sean Miller, what you have to remember is this. He's one of the few coaches that knows what it's like to, co to coach at a high-pressure job. Ask producer Matt. That Arizona fan base is real. We were around them for three or four days at the Pac-12 tournament. It's the most underrated fan base in college basketball. Is it Kentucky? No, but it's right in that next tier below. And so Sean Miller knows what it's like to compete at the highest level. He knows what it's like to win at the highest level. And here's the other thing. He has a chip on his shoulder as well because of how it ended at Arizona through, you know, the NCAA stuff. He gets fired. He wants to come back and prove the doubters wrong. 
And so from, from Sean Miller's perspective, listen, I, I'll say this. Maybe you disagree. I'd rather have Sean Miller than Scott Drew. I'd rather have Sean Miller than Scott Drew, no doubt about it. So to me, yes, I think Sean Miller is absolutely in the mix. Uh, Pete Rose, Hall of Fame. No, no real takes on that. No real takes on that tonight. But uh, somebody says Patino will win a title if he came back to Kentucky. You're absolutely right. Patino would, um, uh, you know, win a national title if he came back to Kentucky. Billy Donovan would be a home run. The only thing with Billy Donovan, and the reason I did not mention him, is because I'll be blunt. Um, what is, this is so freaking crazy. Holy crap! I just went to ESPN.com for the first time in this whole process. And Calipari, who replaces John Calipari at Kentucky? It's right up there on the front page. All right, so what was the conversation? I apologize, I, I missed this here. Uh, Billy Donovan, okay. So the only reason why I'd be a little concerned about Billy Donovan, because I'll be honest, I, I, I'm i just not going to lie about it. I don't really care about the NBA in the regular season. I barely care about it in the postseason. But I believe that the Bulls are in position to potentially make the playoffs. Maybe I'm wrong on that. If they don't make the playoffs, I think he'd be fired. They're in the play-in right now. So I think, I'll say this, I think the Billy Donovan timing could work out a little bit because they got what? They've played 78 games. So they got four games left in the regular season. Listen, Billy Donovan might go in tank mode so he can get the heck out of there, go to Kentucky. He would be a good hire for me. Mark Few, you know, listen, I, I'll say this about Mark Few. I have a newfound respect for Mark Few this year. I have a newfound respect for Mark Few. Um, because I thought this was his best coaching job. And I always said, you know, he always had talent. He's a good coach. I thought this was a great coaching job. I thought this was a great coaching job by Mark Few this year. And he proved that he doesn't just need seven future NBA players because I don't think that's what they have. Um, and so, you know, so yeah. A couple more questions we'll get out of here because I'm running on fumes. And um, boy, oh boy, oh boy, what a night. Are we having fun yet or what? By the way, I appreciate everybody hopping on in. I um, appreciate everybody hopping on in. By the way, how about Torres doing a Arkansas coaching update segment uh, minutes before Wes Moore's report? Um, and I should have just taken Wes Moore's call on uh, on Saturday morning there, or Sunday morning here. Just crazy, 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 crazy. All right, so I think that's it because I don't think I have – too much of a voice left. Um, I don't want to leave because we have 700 people watching at 1 a.m. Eastern time. Producer Matt, you ready to get to work? We we got a lot left to do here, but we'll have clips, by the way, in the morning on Kentucky coaching candidates on which recruits will follow John Calipari to Arkansas. So stay tuned. We got plenty more. And oh, by the way, we got a little national championship game that we probably got to talk about at some point. But I'll tell you what, I do think it's time for me to get out of here. If you're not subscribed, to the Aaron Torres Sports Podcast, please make sure to do so. Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Music, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to subscribe. Also, make sure to rate and review the show. Go ahead, give us a quick five stars. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, all that good stuff. Make sure you're following on social media, at Aaron underscore Torres on Twitter, at Aaron Torres Pod on Instagram, Aaron Torres Podcast Questions at gmail.com, Aaron Torres Podcast Questions at gmail.com. We'll get you some numbers on this show. I would guess we probably had between Twitter and YouTube. I would think at, at we we had to have 40, 50,000 people watch this show. So thank you to everybody. I'm going to say it one last time. If you're not following Wes Moore on Twitter, he is he just broke the biggest college basketball story outside of maybe Coach K's retirement in a decade. Unbelievable. Follow Wes Moore on Twitter at Wes underscore more. That's W E S S underscore more. Uh, and if you're not subscribed, uh, I'm out of here, man. Make sure to listen to his show tomorrow too on the buzz uh, in Arkansas. He is on one to four Eastern time, one Oh three, seven, the buzz credit to Wes Moore. He's a legend. Um, he deserves every single piece of credit he's getting tonight. And also, Let's also make sure this as well. Let's make sure. Um, I don't even know. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Thank you to everybody for watching. I'm getting out. I'm pouring myself a drink. I got to re-record all my intros. What we'll do is we'll run a national championship game preview in the morning as well. But it was fun. 
Wes Moore, I'm forever indebted to. I appreciate you guys. We will talk. I guess Monday, are we going to talk a national championship? It's going to be a bit. By the way, Kentucky and Arkansas have to rebuild their rosters in the next six weeks, eight weeks. We're going to have so much freaking content. God bless America. I'll see y'all. Congrats, Arkansas fans. I know how happy you are. Kentucky fans, I know you're happy too. I'll see y'all 